This program is being presented to you by the Horaeus International Winter School on Gravity and Light. Welcome to the WE Horaeus International Winter School on Gravity and Light. The first lecture was about the notion of topology and topological spaces. That is what this tutorial will be about. The first exercise are simple multiple choice questions. They are designed to spark discussion and as a self-test. You shall tick the correct statements but not the incorrect ones. So let's start. In part A we look at a topological space. The first answer says that it is defined by a set, a topology and an atlas. That is not true since a topological space is only a set equipped with a topology. An atlas is additional structure required for a topological manifold that will be introduced later on. A topological set is a set without any further structure that is also incorrect since a topological space is a set equipped with a topology and a the topology is further structure. A topological space defines a notion of open sets. Well, that is correct, since a topology defines what open sets are. A topological space always has integer dimension, which is the fourth answer. Well, that is also incorrect, since we cannot speak of dimension when dealing with a topological space. And last, a topological space allows to check the continuity of a map from the underlying set to itself. Yes, that is correct. A topological space is the minimal structure required to define the continuity of a map. So in part A we had two correct answers, 3 and 5. Part B deals with the chaotic topology on a set M. It says that it cannot be defined on the natural numbers n. That is not correct. Of course we can equip the natural numbers with the chaotic topology. The second answer is it consists of all subsets of m, which is also not correct, since it only consists of the empty set and the set m itself. The discrete topology would consist of all subsets of m. The chaotic topology on a set contains the empty set. Well, that is definitely correct, since this is the first axiom of a topology. It is the coarsest topology on M. So here we have to introduce what coarser means on topologies. So we can define that a topology O2 is coarser than, than a topology O1 if O2 is contained in O1. Please mind that the notion of, uh, of being contained in, in another set doesn't define a total order since we cannot compare, since there, are, there can be topologies that can not be said to be subsets of each other. So we can only say for some topologies that they are subsets of other topologies and thus we have a partial order. But if we can say that a topology is contained in another topology, we say it is coarser than the other. And for the chaotic topology, 
that only contains the empty set and the set M itself, we clearly see that this is the coarsest topology on M. And the last answer for this question is that the chaotic topology makes all maps F from N to our set M continuous where the domain N may carry an arbitrary topology. So there we have to look at the notion of continuity and thus we have to look if the pre-images of open sets are open in the domain. So open sets on the target M are just the empty set and the set M itself. The pre-image of the empty set is clearly the empty set and the pre-image of the set M is the set N, which both are definitely open in a topological space N. So this answer is correct. Okay. In part C we consider a map F from M to N between topological spaces M equipped with a topology OM and N equipped with a topology ON. In the first answer it says that continuity can only be defined if M is RM and N is RN for some positive integers M and N. Well that is wrong since we don't need to restrict ourselves to the real numbers as sets but we can choose an arbitrary set and equip it with a topology and then check for continuity of the map. So that is wrong. For some maps, one can arrange for the topological notion of continuity to coincide with the undergraduate analysis notion of continuity. If we equip, so if we choose, if we now choose M is RM and N is some RN, like in the first answer, and when we equip both with the standard topology, then we can then we find that the topological notion of continuity is equal to the undergraduate, undergraduate notion of continuity with the epsilon delta criterion. So that is correct. Continuity of a map can only be defined for some topologies. No, that is wrong. We, continuity of a map is defined for any topology. Continuity is a property of a map that only depends on the topology OM. That is also not correct since continuity says that pre-images of open sets are open in the domain. So we need to know what open sets in the target are as well as on the domain. And thus we need the topology on the target ON as well as the topology on the domain OM. We need both, so that is wrong. And the last answer is choosing the discrete topology on M makes all maps from M to N continuous. Again, this is correct now since the discrete topology on M are all the subsets of M. And now we can equip the target N with an arbitrary topology and we find that the pre-images of open sets on the target are always open on the domain since we chose the discrete topology, namely the power set on M as our open sets. So it is correct. And the last part of this exercise is about the notion of open and closed sets on topological spaces. So a subset U that is a subset of M of a topological space may be open and not open at the same time. Well that is nonsense. Either it is open or it is not open. But not both at the same time. It may be open but not closed. Well, that is correct. As an example, look at 
m is equal to the real numbers. We equip it with the standard topology. And then we look at the interval. u is the open interval from 0 to 1, where 0 and 1 are not included. This subset is clearly open and it is not closed since the complement which is minus infinity to zero included and unif unified with the interval from one included to infinity is not open. So this is wrong, it is right. A subset may be closed but not open. This is also correct. We again give an example with the real numbers equipped with the standard topology. And now we look at the interval 0, 1 with 0 and 1 included. This interval is closed but not open. It may be open and closed. This is also correct. So we showed this in the lecture that for, a, for an arbitrary topological space, M, the set M itself is open and closed in the topology at the same time. So this is correct. And the last answer, that it may be not open and not closed, is also correct. Again. An example for that, we take the real numbers and look at the interval 0, 1 with 0 included and 1 excluded. So this interval is neither open nor closed and thus this answer is correct. This was the first exercise. Now we move on to the second exercise. which is about topologies on a simple set. The first question is to write down the definition of a topology O on a set M. So, a set O, which is a subset of the power set of M, on a set M is called a topology on M if three criteria are fulfilled. The first one is that the empty set is an element of O as well as the set M is an element of O. The second one is that for two sets, U and V, that are both elements of the topo of O, also their intersection is part of the of O. And the third one, third and last one, is that for uh, a family C A C alpha, where alpha is the element of some index set A. If we have this family C alpha as an element of O, then also the union with respect to all these alpha in the index set of these C alpha is also an element of the topology. This is the definition of a topology on a set M. Now we have an example. We have the set M that contains the elements 1, 2, 3 and 4. It's clearly a set. And the question is, does O1 as the set of the empty set, the set with the element 1 and the set M itself constitute a topology on M? We see that the first criterion is fulfilled. The empty set is an element 
of O1, as well as M is an element of O1. The second criterion is also fulfilled. For example, the intersection of the empty set with the set with the element 1 gives again the empty set, which is an element of O1. Or the intersection of the set with the element 1 with M gives just the set with the 1. We can look at all these possibilities and see that all intersections are again in O1 and thus the second criterion is fulfilled. And also the third criterion is fulfilled as each unification, as each As we can look at as the union of all sets, for example, set with the element 1 and M, which is again M, or the empty set with the set with the element 1, is the element 1, they are all again part of O1, and we see that of all unions we can imagine with these sets in O1, we always land again in O1. Thus, all criterions are fulfilled and O1 is a topology on M. Now the question is, is the topology O2 that is defined here also in topology? So we can again check the empty set as well as the set M are both in O2. All the intersections of elements in O2 are again elements of O2. So second criterion is also fulfilled. However, if we check criterion 3, we see that if we consider the union of the sets 1 and 2, which is the set with the elements 1, 2, that this is not in O2. Thus, we have a violation of criterion 3 here and O2 is not a topology on M. And the last question is, are there other topologies than the ones recognized so far? Well, definitely there are. So there are, for example, the chaotic topology or the discrete topology and many, many more. So this was exercise two, which deals with, topo with topologies on a simple set. And now we move on to exercise three about continuous functions. So what is the definition of a continuous map? So the definition of a continuous map is just that pre-images of open sets in the target are open in the domain. So let now M be again the set 1, 2, 3, 4 and we consider the identity map. On M. It is defined by taking the element 1 to itself and taking the element 2 to itself and so on. 
Now we want to check if the identity map is continuous. If we equip the domain with the chaotic topology and the target with the topology O target that contains the empty set, the set 1 and the set M itself. So clearly O target is a topology on M. So we can look at the pre-images of open sets. We look at the pre-image under the identity map of the set 1 that is an open set in the target and we see due to the identity map mapping all elements to itself that this is the set with the element 1. But the set with the element 1 clearly is not an element of the chaotic topology with which we equip the domain. So the pre-images of open sets are not open. Thus the identity map is not continuous with respect to the chosen topologies. But now we consider the inverse identity map. It also maps from N to M. But now the target is equipped with the chaotic topology and the domain with the other topology. First we provide the values of the inverse identity map. Well, that is easy since also the inverse identity map only takes elements from the set to itself. So we get 1 is mapped to 1, 2 to 2, and so on. Now we want to check whether it, this inverse identity map is continuous. Therefore we again look at pre-images of open sets. Now the domain is equipped with the other topology and the target is equipped with a chaotic topology. Thus we can only look at the pre-images of the open set, which is the open set, which is an element of O. So we call this topology here O, the topology of the domain and the other pre-image under the inverse identity map is of the set M itself. Well, that is M itself, which is also an element of O. Thus, the inverse identity map which we denoted IDM inverse is continuous with respect to the chosen topologies. Now we have seen how the notion of continuity is directly impacted by the chosen topologies on domain and target. In exercise 4 which is already the last exercise of this problem sheet, we deal with the standard topology on RD. So, the first question is to sketch the real intervals that are given in the table below and decide whether they are open or not. So, the interval 0, 1 with 0 and 1 excluded, we can draw easily in this way. And clearly this is open in the standard topology as we can find, as we can at every point find open balls that completely lie in this interval. For the interval 0, 1 with 0 included, which we could draw like this, we cannot find open balls anymore, so consider we are sitting here, which consider the point 0, 
we can not find an open ball around the point zero such that it completely lies in this interval. So, thus, this interval is not open. The other case would be that zero is excluded but one is included. That doesn't change anything since now we fail at the point one and again the set is the interval is not open. And the interval with zero and one included is also not open. Now we look at the union of the open interval 0, 1 and the open interval 0, 2, 3, which is just pictured like this. So we see the union of open sets is of course again open. That was a criterion for a topology. And of course, we can also can find open balls at any point in, these, in this interval so that they lie completely in this interval. So now <clears throat> we have understood what open intervals on the real line are. So what about subsets of R2? We now consider six different subsets of R2 which is equipped with a standard topology. Note that the, this frame around the subsets has no meaning. It is not a rectangular area of R2 but rather it's, it represents all of R2. So this is all of R2 here. And we have this subset and we can and we easily see that for each point we can find such open balls such that the ball completely lies in the subset and thus the subset is open. Also the second example is an open subset of R2. You see at every point you can find open balls that are completely in the set, thus the subset is open. The third example here, it's not open anymore. You could, you could consider this point here and then you can find no open ball that completely lies in the set itself. It always hits some outside territory, thus this set is not open in R2. Here this was an open interval in R, however now this subset is not open in R2. As we can find no open ball in R2 that completely lies in this open interval on R. So, the open interval on, the, on R is not open in R2. Now, the fifth example here is directly the complement to the second example. So, the complement was open, that means that this set is closed. And now we want to check whether it is open. Well, no it's not. We can see this easily that there are no open balls, for example, for this point. And the last subset of R2 is again a union of open sets and such a union of open sets is of course again open. 
So now we have seen examples of open intervals in R as well as in R2. And now we look at a function f that maps from the real numbers to the real numbers and is given by the following graph. Now both domain and target of this map are equipped with a standard topology and we want to know whether this function is continuous. So continuity means that pre-images of open sets are open. And now we look at an open set here in the target which could be for example the set. We see that its pre-image goes to here however this point is included in the interval and in the last question we saw that such an interval where one border is included is not open in R with respect to the standard topology. Thus this function is not continuous. This we would also expect from our intuition gained from undergraduate analysis as we see that this function makes a jump which we say to be is not to be not continuous so for maps on the reals equipped with a standard topology our topological notion of continuity coincides with the notion from undergraduate analysis.